Welcome to an hour of power. I am Keith Anthony Blanchard, spiritual teacher, musician, author of the best-selling book, Homecoming, Crossing the Bridge to the Soul, and your host of Center of Light. Let's dive in. <laughs> Welcome to Center of Light. I had some major upgrades happen, and if tech issues could be 2020 in review, bruh, let me tell you. I got to collect myself. I was busy. Things have changed since these upgrades and all these defaults got moved and my routine is out of whack. So the video starts and stops because YouTube wasn't engaging because that defaulted into that long story. I think we're here. I'm doing my best. Welcome to Center of Light Radio. It's been a while since I've done this format. I love it. I miss it. I just need a break sometimes and play on my own. But tonight I have a fantastic guest, Ms. Susan Plunkett, Dr. Susan Plunkett. We're going to be speaking about her books, but a new release bestseller, if I'm not mistaken, which I'm probably absolutely sure, uh, The Wanderers on Earth. I did a little bit of research. I don't like perusing too much of my guest's work. I like the shock and awe and the bang like everyone else. I don't have to be this learned guy in clinical and say, you know, I, I, like, I like riding the, the cosmic surfboard with my cosmic sister to the peaceful shore of forever. Welcome to Center of Light. It's good to see you. Keith Anthony Blanchard. Y'all know about this guy down here. These sacred seed syllables. This is who you are at your essence. I'm looking for this thing right here. I must do. I must do. I must do. I must do. Homecoming Crossing the Bridge to the Soul, my new bestseller. Thank you, Gavin Lee Davies. We have a mutual friend, Susan and I. He's a beautiful man. Gavin Lee, thank you. Everyone, uh, you can go to Amazon right now and look up Keith Anthony Blanchard, Homecoming, Crossing the Bridge to the Soul. If you read the book already, still follow the same link and leave me a re review. That would be fantastic. Check that out. Lavender Soul CDs. I'm selling them dirt cheap. They used to be $20 for a piece. Uh, now they're 20 for all three. We have thousands. We're moving them from our heart to yours. Good to see you. Let's get down to some Senior of Light Radio beeswax. Let me tell you about my guest tonight. Susan Plunkett, The Wanderers on Earth. Earth, her bio, the wanderers from the fifth dimension are now incarnate on Earth in the third dimension. As 21-year-old humans living around the world in Moscow, New York, London, Tehran, Mumbai, Dublin, Tokyo, and Jerusalem, growing up they have, excuse me, growing up they have each had many strange encounters with the dark side and now suspect they are not from this time in space. When they wake up, they reunite with their twin flames. Wow, that's pretty magical. And remember who they are and why they incarnated. That sounds like many of us. There you have it. Once awake, they work through a virtual reality game called Fifth Dimension. I love it already. Traveling to hot spots around the world and battle the dark lords to prevent disaster. I posted her links, which I'm going to do again now in this forum. Check them out. One is to purchase her new book and the other is to find the overall view of my guest tonight, which is John Hunt's Publishing and the other is a personal website. Check that out. Continuing forth. I'm excited. Susan Plunkin is a writer and a psychologist in private practice in New York City. She received her doctorate at the New, War, the New School for Social Research in 1989. Her first book, When Every Breath Becomes a Prayer, I can just eat that with a spoon, reflects her interest in Jungian dream analysis and people who have had an experience of the new, numinous as a result of emotional pain. Her new book, Missions, well, Another book, Mission from Venus, pushes further into the fantasy worlds of the fifth and sixth dimensions. She lives with her family in Greenwich Village, unfortunately still in the third dimension. I love it. I just got to get back into the groove of things. My dear sister, welcome to Center of Light. Thank you, Keith. I'm so happy to be here talking to you. I'm winded. I'm, sp I'm spent. Tell oh. us about this Thank new beautiful you. baby of yours. Uh, well, Wanderers on Earth is the second book in a trilogy. The trilogy is Mission from Venus. And I believe that Wanderers on Earth is the truth of what's happening here. That there are actually 80 million higher dimensional beings 
incarnate now are all around the world um, who have come here to help us. Um, help us what? Help us wake up to the fact that we're each, every one of us, a spark of the divine. We are God and we're temporarily uh, having this having this body that we have, which is, who knows, um, it isn't really who we are, it's a temporary rental. Um, it's, maybe it's part ape, maybe it's part Nephilim, maybe it's part extraterrestrial, none of that really matters. What really matters is that the jewel inside the body is our divinity. And that's what the wanderers have come to remind us. Because if we get that, if we understand that we are divine beings, then <coughs> we don't, our suffering ends. And we can make it to the fourth dimension, just sail there easily. Because you have to be able to understand love to move to the fourth dimension. Earth is already going there. And the wanderers have the call to help more humans go there because it's the end of a 75,000 year cycle on earth. And at that time is a chance for humans to make the leap to the next dimension, which is a whole lot easier than the third dimension. But there's a lot of suffering in the third dimension because it's the dimension of duality good and bad, dark and light, old and young, high and low, rich and poor. But in the fourth dimension, it's just about understanding that we are, we are loved divinely, incredibly, totally. Beyond and measure. Beyond measure. <laughs> beyond and measure. You get that message, it's a joyful life. So the wanderers answered the call for volunteers to come to earth to help humans get that message as Jesus once did. Jesus came to earth, that was his message. You will do what I do. You are loved beyond measure. There's, you can do no wrong. You can do all the miracles that I do. Jesus was like, to me, the most incredible wanderer that there ever was. Do I that. Just, <laughs> I love it. You know, I, 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 I love him, and I think of him, and I pray to him. I know that's not his forever name. That was his name when he came here. Um, I know him now as Lord Sananda and Mary Magdalene as Lady Nada. Um, they had many incarnations, but when they came here uh, for that life as Jesus and Mary Magdalene, they are twin flames. They came here to help humans get the message of our own divinity. And of course, Jesus had to be taken out. That's what the dark side does. They don't want us to get that message. Um, nevertheless, he fooled them because he transcended and he showed them that we have eternal life despite their attempts. The wanderers are also Jesus was a wanderer, Buddha was a wanderer, uh, Tesla may have been a wanderer, John Lennon may have been a wanderer. His message in that song, Imagine, was just all about love. You know, imagine the whole world living in peace, imagining us all living as one. That's the message the wanderers in my book bring. The first book, Mission from Venus, they're on Venus training to come to Earth training to incarnate as humans because it's a different vibration um, when you're in the third dimension. So they kind of had to power down to our vibration to live here because right now the laws around living on earth say that you can't really intrude here unless you're born here because there used to be a lot of intrusions here with ETs coming. Um, there may be some who still come and slip through the quarantine, but legally in order to come to earth, 
you're supposed to be born here. So the wanderers had to be born as babies and grow up in the third dimension. But meanwhile, while they're trying to do that, get grown up, the dark side, the Lords of Orion, are slipping through the quarantine and trying to kill them. So that's the tension in the book. Will they grow up? Will they make it? Um, will they get their message out? And we'll see if they all can make it. This is a movie and a fantastic one. It's, it's, going, it's a series just right there. I, I love it. I love the parallel of us. Um, so I know having this kind of creativity to see something clearly and bring it through to a bestseller status. That's a, that's a hell of an achievement for anyone. Whatever your bestseller status is in your life, congratulations. You need to pat yourself on the back and stand up. You know, and sometimes you get kicked in your britches. Well, I just seen that with my technology. But I, you had to have had some sort of contact. Celestial, extraterrestrial, a little bit above, and cross fades into it really doesn't matter. Um, can you tell me about that if you did? And what did they look like? What did they sound like? What's their message? Kind of fun stuff that we need to know about something like that. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, it started when I was a little girl. I remember being in first grade and looking out the window too much. So my teacher, Ms. McGinnis, she picked up my whole desk. You know, those little desks and little chairs we have in first grade. And she pushed it all the way across the room next to the bulletin board and said, no, just do your work. You know, add up these things, two plus one and all that. And so she came around to see if I was doing it after she put me by the bulletin board and I wasn't. <clears throat> so she said, you know, what are you doing? And I said, well, I was just wondering, like, what are we doing here? Like, you know, what are we all doing here on Earth? And she was like, what is wrong with you? Aren't your parents Catholic? And I said to her like, yeah, but my little six-year-old brain was like, what does that have to do with what we're doing here? I don't understand. I didn't understand why she was bringing up the fact that my parents were Catholic with what I was asking her, like, what were we all doing on this planet? So I think I was always kind of wondering, like, what a beautiful cat, um, what we were all doing here. And then I think like all kids, I sort of shut down some of my questioning until I was older and I was visiting, you know, like a lot of people do. I was always seeing whatever channel or whatever healer my friends were seeing. And I kept getting the message, you know, you're a channel, you're a channel. You need to write, you should write, you're a channel. Don't worry, they'll all come through you. Um, <clears throat> and I was, you know, not thinking I could do that. I was thinking, hey, I have a family, I have a child, I have a, I'm a psychologist. How can I like start writing about the things that I think about? It's too weird, it's too weird for people. But then I met this shaman from Australia, the daughter of an Aborigine. Carrie Henwood, and she channeled archangels, and they were, well, celestial. They were so wonderful, and they said, look, it's a trilogy, you have to write it. Um, you were born to do this, you, you're a scribe. You're not really a writer, you're just a scribe. You're just supposed to write down what you get. They will deliver it to you, uh, the whole story, they will they write in the morning because they do downloads in the night when you're sleeping. Don't be afraid. Um, but there were so many voices that I couldn't keep it sorted at first. So then this other intuitive, Cindy Dale, told me, look, ask one of them to be the executive voice and for everybody to give their input to that one and that one only to speak to you, because otherwise um, y you'll get overwhelmed. That we I got overwhelmed, Susan, when this first started happening. It's like a payphone booth. There were people waiting in line to talk, and sometimes they're trying to shout over the other one. To be, it's like, okay, yeah. guys, I get it. Y'all have to come together and find the president, whoever's the mouthpiece of this group. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Was that when you were writing Homecoming? 
that was in 1996, which Homecoming is a hybrid of uh, the yeah. Divine Principle. This is when I started to have my experiences uh, with the higher up and a very conscious way and integration, if you will. And it was very rich, like cheesecake. Cheesecake's wonderful. After about four bites of that, yet enough. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it was sort of that as analogously. No, but I think you're right. What you said, like, who's going to speak? And that's what this woman, Cindy Dale, said to me. Like, ask one of them to be the main speaker. So I did. And I do sometimes feel like people on both sides of me, but it seems to be more clear. I don't really see the beings who are speaking to me. I see them sitting in council in another universe. Um, but what I hear is words and what I see when I'm writing our pictures, I see the images, and then I just translate what I see onto the computer. <clears throat> and it's the best thing I can do now. I feel so happy when I'm doing it. And sometimes my work gets in the way. I'll have too many patients and I don't get to write, or I don't know, the dog ate something and I have to go out in the middle of the night with him, and then I'm tired in the next day, but um, I love it when I have time to just sit and download what I've Bliss been out. Counsel, yeah. Sit and bliss out. That's what it's yeah. like for me. I created a life for myself, dear, to where this chair, I live in it. I Literally, time I wake up to the time I go to bed and all the work in between, other than to go run an errand, get some food and take care of my cat. I live in this chair. And it's like rocket fuel. It's ever so massaging. It's so ever expanding. It's so empowering. It's like sitting on space shuttle fuel and dynamite. Um, it's like an infinite potential in weight, would you say? Wow. Do you even meditate in that chair? I'm meditating right now. Whoa. So you yeah. meditate. Are you just in a constant meditative state? Yeah. Wow. I've, I've learned that I don't have to see to see. So I don't have to shut my eyes to make that point. I shut my vision, my taking in things that I've learned to filter out nonsense and the things that I can't filter out simply stick out like a sore thumb. And so now I can turn away from it, not because I'm afraid of them trying to run away from it or not own responsibility. I'm just not interested in the nonsense. So I've expanded my awareness over a course of a more so recently, year, uh, last five years exponentially. Um, I'm in a state of meditation. I am always processing in the mind. The monkey wants to talk, so I let him talk. And I want to see what he's talking about. So I, as the witness, can say, you know, what's going on in here, guys? You know, what kind of nonsense you stirring up? So there, in these multifacets of myself, like you said, it can be overwhelming. It is for me, but I've found how to become comfortable and let things wobble me versus me trying to find myself in the wobble. I find me as the wobble happens. I don't try to resist any current. Good for you. Mm. You know, I love something you said, in, many things you said in Homecoming, but <clears throat> one of them was like when you were talking about time and you said, oh yeah, well, you know, really actually it's all happening at once, but we can't live that way because our heads would explode. So we have to, we have to like, because if you realize that everything would manifest at once and it would be too much. And it sounds like sometimes there are a lot of things manifesting from you at once. Because, you know, we can lose the convention of time if we get in a certain state and then things can manifest too quickly. Yeah, time is, in this, in this regard, time is a buffer on purpose because if we would manifest immediately at this place that we are without unawareness, we would manifest fears left and right and, and immediately and we couldn't handle it. So the buffer of time allows for the process to slowly come in so we can feel and go, you know, I need to mold this clay a little better. I need to make a new choice. So we can refine ourselves so the horrible things, the horrible karma that would come would actually just simply manifest in a spontaneous moment. So yeah. time is of great benefit. It's important. Yeah, it helps us. Where it doesn't exist is in the unconscious. So when people dream, there's no time. That 
You know, that's the funny. That, that was my next question. What in our dream world is reality in, in this life? What is, how does that parallel work together, shake hands? One small part of it. Because in our dream world, we're free from time. There's no time in the unconscious. We're free from space. So you can travel to any galaxy you want. You can travel to any time period you want. You can mix those things together. You can have the room you're sitting in now be in the past, the future, in your childhood home. Um, because when we're dreaming, when we're in touch with our unconscious, we aren't bound by the conventions of waking reality. So I've been on other planets in my dreams. I've been in other eras in my dreams. And probably everyone else has too. They may just not remember it. Because the ego doesn't see any reason to remember your dreams. You know, when I have dreams, and I, I love what you said, and I definitely want to support it. And, no, and there's no way out of it. <laughs> you can't argue with something that's so simple and in your face, which is, you know, in the dream world, there is no constraint. of There's no rules there. And the way you can prove that is that bear that mauled you last night when you were dreaming. You still woke up. So there are no rules there. And I'm getting very proficient at bringing myself to a space of consciousness. Uh, in fact, a few nights ago, I had three dogs woke me up in cold sweats, ripping me apart. And, you know, and the fourth time, I, I brought myself to the awareness because of the frequency of it. And I said, you know what? I'm sleeping on the bed. This has no, no effect on me. And I closed my eyes and let them do what they did. And it went away just like that. It, and it, I shifted to another level. Just because I allowed the dream, I played the game to the end. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So do you channel your books? And if so, what is your process? My process is just sit down uh, at the computer and type. And most times when I do that, stuff happens. It just comes out. And it's not always what I thought. Like, for example, last week, I sat down and I thought I was going to be writing about one thing because I sort of had that idea in my mind, like I'm writing book three of the trilogy. And I thought, well, I don't know where this story is going. I think this is where it's going. And I sat down and it was totally something else that came out. I started writing about a visit by Jesus to 2020 on earth in a garden in the West Village to some of the wanderers. And he sat down with them in the backyard of the brownstone and he was talking to them. And I didn't know I was going to write that. It just, that's what they wanted. And I described him and uh, their conversation. But I didn't know that that's what I was going to be writing. And sometimes I don't know what's <laughs> going to come out. But I trust because mostly because the archangels said to me, they're very funny, you know, archangels when they talk. Um, <clears throat> they were talking to this Australian Aborigine shaman. And she, she said one day to me a few years ago, hey, the ark, she called them the arcs. The arcs are telling, hey, tell her, like, lighten up, Susan. Have a cocktail, eat a cookie, lighten up. It doesn't have to be so serious. And I love them for that because I think I probably could get too self-critical or too serious. And hey, it's about having a good time. Our soul wants to have joy. We incarnate to wake up to the reality that we're divine. And that should be joyful for us. So I'm trying harder to be joyful every day, to remember that I and everyone is divine. We are all God. Every leaf, every dog, every cat, every human, <laughs> we are all God. And there's, that's just how it is. And you know, there's all this talk now about how, how humans before, before the birth of Christ probably, before the New Testament, <clears throat> were visited all the time by extraterrestrials and extraterrestrials mated with humans and so humans were hybrids and that of course in the beginning maybe souls came 
maybe they came in through a, a wormhole over Hawaii and they hung out around apes and then the they made the apes more hospitable and then the apes evolved and then when they were more humanoid then the extraterrestrials came and mixed their DNA together with them so that we're like ape and extraterrestrial and then the angels came uh, the nephilim and mated with humans so that we're all of these different hybrid things and so what it doesn't matter what the temporary rental is this body um because the jewel inside is still god so does it really matter if we're part ape and part nephilim and part et it doesn't matter because it's a beautiful thing that we got i mean these hands how handy they are <laughs> no fun <laughs> i love it I mean, that we can, like, do things with them. And these, like, we have these great bodies. I don't really care if I'm part ape and part Nephilim and part T. Because I know that the jewel inside is God. In, and it's the same for every single being. And that makes me so happy every day. And I never want to forget that. And I wish I knew it when I was younger. Because I was spending a lot of years thinking... You're just a jerk and you fucked up, you messed up and you, um, you know, your parents are pissed at you and you're not doing this right. And, you know, <clears throat> I wish I'd known earlier that you can do no wrong, that you're divine and you came here for your soul to experience joy in the third dimension. Yeah, yeah, because we, we can't out -sin God's grace. It's impossible. Oh. You can't out -sin God's grace. Um, I, when you were talking about writing uh, and trusting, you know, where is this coming from? What is this? What am I going to do with that? And when you trust, <clears throat> two weeks or a month later when you're writing again, something else as strange comes in and you go, that's why I wrote that. And so you put these two together. <clears throat> why was there a mission? called for volunteers to fulfill okay. whatever on earth at this time right because this is an auspicious time on planet earth and a lot of people are talking about that now and all eyes in the galaxy are looking at earth right now to see what's going to happen because earth herself has begun to move into the fourth dimension like if you remember well you're probably too young but um, there was a wonderful musical in the 60s called Hair, and there was, the theme song was The Age of Aquarius, which is like the most beautiful song. And that's true. We were in the dark Piscean age for 2,600 years, and now we're in the age of Aquarius, a light age. And it's the dawning of a golden age on Earth as Earth moves into the fourth dimension. However, in order to continue incarnating on Earth, humans will have to become fourth dimensional. So everybody's cool now, whether you're third dimensional or fourth dimensional, but when you transition, when you drop your current body and go to the in-between place, if you wanna come back to Earth for the next time, you're gonna to have to be fourth dimensional. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to go to another planet that's still third dimensional. So the Council of Nine, which resides in Saturn's rings and looks out for the planets in our solar system, said not enough humans are ready to make the leap to the fourth dimension. We need a mission to Earth. We need to send more help. We don't have another Jesus right now. <clears throat> so we're going we're gonna to ask for volunteers to incarnate down there and try to wake up more humans because this 75,000 year period is ending. The planet is moving. It's already halfway there into the fourth dimension. And we want more humans ready. We, you know, of the like, 7.7 .7 billion unit humans on the planet, there's not enough. They want at least 2 billion to go into the fourth dimension. And that wasn't happening. 
So they asked the wanderers to come down here and wake us up. I love it. Jesus already did his. He taught us how to do it. Now it's our turn. Yeah. <laughs> it's our turn to do it. Right. So apparently what I've been told is that there are 80 million wanderers. Maybe you're a wanderer. Maybe Gavin's a wanderer. I don't know. I think people who are talking about this stuff can be wanderers. I think there are wanderers and wanderers. <laughs> some wander and some simply sit still and wonder. Yeah. They're both beautiful. They're both full of infinite possibility. So that was the reason <laughs> for the mission. Because it's time, because Earth is moving quickly into the fourth dimension uh, and humans weren't keeping up. So if you're third dimensional and Earth is fourth dimensional, you can't come back here because you couldn't take the vibration because it's a different vibration and you need to be holding enough light to come back. So, but everybody has a place to go. If you aren't ready to go to the fourth dimension because you want to screw around a bit longer and not understand that you're God, then you can go to another third dimensional planet and have another 75,000 years there. There's no rush. Mm, mm. It's a lot more painful in the third dimension. The fourth dimension is a lot more fun. So speaking of screwing around, what is sex like in another dimension and have you had it? <laughs> what a question. <laughs> I barely have sex anymore in this dimension. <laughs> um, but I did love it when I was younger. Um, <clears throat> um, what they have come, they have taught me about sex in the fifth dimension is that you have sex through violet, the violet ray. And when you unite with your light partner, your whoever, whatever partner you're having sex with, when you form a union, you travel right up through the chakras in your light body, right out through the top to the external chakras right up to the cosmic the cosmic layer which dwells in a state of continual orgasm so that orgasm is not is not 30 seconds or however long it is here um i never timed it exactly because you're a little distracted during orgasm but it's endless. You can dwell in the state of cosmic bliss in the higher dimensions. And the, one of the sweetest gifts that the divine has given the human is orgasm. That is a gift that we've been given so that we can begin to have a taste of what it's like, what state the universe dwells in, that the universe dwells in a state of cosmic orgasm or cosmic bliss. So in the higher dimensions, you tap into that and you just ride it. It doesn't have to end in 15 or 30 seconds. That is the nearest understanding that I've had, and I am looking forward to that. That's very, very profound, and I totally understand it. I've had my experiences. I, I love your word usage. You, you paint things in a very simple, one or two words at most. Uh, you called uh, the, um, the waiting place, is that the one you used? The uh, place. The in-between place. And so yeah. all these words are fantastic. Um, I've been I've, there. I've go been ahead. There. In this life, I've been there because I had a younger sister and she died. Um, and I didn't feel complete with her. So I knew about the, the work of this psychologist in Los Angeles, who's now dead, who accidentally... Um, when he was regressing patients to past life regression, some of them started regression, regressing to the in-between place, to the place where you go when you die before you take the next life. So he started teaching other psychologists how to regress people to the life between life place. So I found one of these people who does this and it's a process of, it's two four hour sessions and wow, it's amazing to go to the life between life place because you just can't believe what it feels like. It feels so beautiful. 
And I think I was weeping the whole time. My human body was lying on a, like lying on a chaise in his office. And he was next to me and he kept talking to me. And I wanted him to stop talking to me because I was communicating with the beings over there through mental telepathy. And I just so wanted to communicate with them. But he kept asking me things because I think he felt I have to hold on to her leg, so to speak, so I can bring her back. But he said to me, um, what do you look like over there? And he said, look down. And I looked down and I was a blue oval of light. That's all I was. And the other beings I saw were blue, were different color ovals of light. And then he said, what's your name? And without thinking, I said, Sonom, Sonom. And I made her one of the characters. I used that name for one of the wanderers in my book. And I realized that must be my forever name. Right now, my name is Susan in this dimension, a name which I have never really liked. And I said to my mother, why did you have to name me Susan? She <laughs> said, shut up. You're lucky I didn't name you Maud. That was my first <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, I, I know I know that space of identifying with a, a forever name. What you see below my below my video, that's my forever name. It, it came to me in meditation many many years ago, ninety four, ninety five, and I just said, if my soul has a name, what is it? And it said Yanava, and I heard it just like that. And yeah. all these years go by to two years ago, and I met a holy man from India, divine man. And he said, basically, Baba or another? Um, this was, a, no, uh, Swamji Viswayogi. Um, oh. He is Lord Datta. And he says, oh, he says, yes. And it almost surprised him that I said that. He said, he said, these are sacred seed syllables of the soul. Why is the heart? It's the ya, the power of God, the fire, the passion. Na, you see the zero, the O representing wholeness. And it's the na is the mind linearly. Yeah, and va yeah. is the backbone as to why you see the spine in the V, Yanava. It's who we are at our soul essence. So I understand that place. Very, and it's like, you can't shake that. That's just magical. Yeah. It's just, it's amazing. Like when you knew instantly when you asked, what is my name? Like when he asked me, it was just like that. I didn't know I knew it. We know stuff we don't know we know. Everyone <laughs> listening has a forever name and they can just ask themselves what is my forever name and it's a beautiful thing to know anyway so yeah the that's delicious and you of course you know it it may take you a little bit of being intentful with yourself to you have to want something something beautiful many people don't many people feel they don't deserve such grace and goodness so it may take some time what does it take for a fourth a person to reach the fourth dimension along with the earth and what happens to them if they do not achieve that um what it takes is the ability to hold to vibrate at a certain frequency and that is to hold enough light specifically saint germain says it's violet light that that we need to be able to hold but the way we hold it is through service to others so those of us here on the planet who are in service to other beings, whether you're delivering the pizza or cooking the meals or washing the floor or walking the dog or being a doctor or a nurse, whatever your service is, if you're in service to others, you are headed toward the fourth dimension. If you are in service only to yourself, all you care about is, I have my money, I only care about my bank account, um, I got mine, it's not, my, it's not my problem what other people have. But if you want, every, if you have take the position that I don't want anything for myself, that I don't want for all beings, that is fourth dimensional consciousness. I want for everyone whatever I have, you know, food, shelter, freedom from fear, freedom from care. Um, but if you're thinking, I just, 
I just want to get what's mine and I don't care whether you get yours or not. That's not service to others. And that's, that's not fourth dimensional thinking. You and I came off the same boat. I mean, you are me. I am. <laughs> I say that all the time. The quickest way in this game right here on this day, in this time, to raise your vibration is to be of service to others. Be it if you're a bartender, a wait person, whatever it is you do, you want to get in the raising the vibration of the game. Start helping as many people as you can. Check yourself. Yeah. But get in the service game. That's, yeah, the, that's, that's the that's the super highway. That's getting in the car, man. That's getting that's, in and having this current move behind you. That's that's the journey. And if you don't want to do that, if you want to hoard or be a hedge fund manager or just care about yourself, then you can do that. But you're going to spend <clears throat> at least another 75,000 years in the third dimension not on earth you're going to have to go to another planet that is still third dimensional and there are billions of planets that are third dimensional and you, you'll just be going there when you die you won't be coming back here only can come back here if you're fourth dimensional or higher this is where the party's at yeah right every being in the universe is has gazing upon us to watch us what we're doing they're, they're all yeah. they've got their eyes on Earth right now to see which way we're going. <clears throat> how many people are going to make the leap and how many are going to, when they die, have to go to some other third dimensional planet. Because this is going to be paradise on Earth in a couple hundred years. I'm kind of living mine now and I'm, sat I'm not satisfied. I want as much as I can get. Um, I think you're doing the same. At least yeah. you got your big toe in the water. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. I'm a happy human. I don't I don't suffer that much. <sighs> Powerful shit, isn't it? Yeah. And I think the other another component is <coughs> <coughs> sorry. <clears throat> to accept others like so what if somebody's not wanting to go to the fourth dimension so what if they feel like they need to amass billions of dollars for themselves and not share it it's not for us to judge they'll wake up at some point so be of service don't judge others love everything that happens to you <clears throat> just accept it but never forget that you're that there's a jewel in you that you're divine i could just sit here and drink this all day you all are long. stuff you wrote well, a lot of the same stuff in homecoming yeah I, it, that's why i say you and i came off the same boat you know i paddled first you paddled second we took turns taking naps and we got here together the same. And, and you I, know there are lots of other people Probably the people that listen to you are um, fairly conscious also that they're divine. Absolutely. The same know? as your readers. I mean, you know, we can we attract lessons for sure yeah. to expand us, but we can only handle what we can only handle. Um, yeah. Your work is delicious. I love your way. I love your... I could feel... I have more passion... And I have sincerity. You have more sincerity, and your passion backs that up. My passion leads the way. I'm a, I'm on fire. I, I get that. I'm in it to that kind of thing, and then the sincerity follows. But I think, as the opposite of me, and vice versa, I think yours is the flip. I think you have this very sincere, honest, easy way. It's powerful. Uh -huh. And maybe that's why we both found our way to Gavin and John Hunt Publishing. He's the bridge. <laughs> I know. He's, he's, he's crossing the bridge to the soul. <laughs> I know. He's wonderful. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. He's like a positive human being. He's just delightful. <clears throat> and I want him to have every success, too, with, you know, with heart. And he's, a, he's a catalyst for lots of creators. So he, he is a part of a hierarchy, if you will. <laughs> A yeah. catalyst for all the creators, creators under him as branches of a tree. 
and that affects all these readers that's changing yeah. millions of lives that's a pretty powerful place to be in. I mean if you want to think about service <clears throat> him writing harvest and spending all that time with that woman that he calls in the book Susan I'm a psychologist I could not have done those interviews with her I would have like lost it I mean that was so scary that book is like I don't know how he did that that just blew my mind that he stuck I'm sure there were times when he thought I can't do this this is too scary this is too heavy I can't write this book but he did it and he helped that woman and he freed her I mean I mean I it sounds like he freed her and then he published harvest so that everybody could learn but I could no more have done that and I said to him personally I hope you don't do any more of that kind of research because it takes too big of a toll <clears throat> could you do something divine next time do the other side <clears throat> oh what's your cat's name her name is crystal and she's a pistol. Let me I tell you. lost your sound. She's a TARDIS shell, so she's got a fire in her. I lost your sound. Oh. Her name is Crystal. She's a TARDIS shell. Oh, she's so and beautiful. Crystal is a pistol. Let me tell you. I just had her fixed. But she's got a fire in her. Let me tell you. <laughs> How old is Crystal? Uh, she's 10 months. Oh, she's a young girl. Mm -hmm. oh. I have two five-year-old cats and a five-year-old dog. <clears throat> oh, Gavin and I had spoken about doing something on the lighter side. Uh, I have a few ideas, and I'm Good. letting time go by so we can settle. But uh, I'm always into projects. If you got something that we can do and fun, and I'll throw something your way. I like just sitting in this chair, like you, with that pencil yeah. or whatever, and creating and being in that service kind of infinite space of power. Yeah, that's good. He he needs to do something a little lighter. After Anything all. you want to share with us, dear, before we, we exit out Center of Light's main voyage for the third time? Um, um, thank you for being here. I thank you for having me. And I just want to say to all your listeners, because you already know this, you are so loved. You are a divine being. The essence of you is like a jewel inside this body that you have now, this temporary rental that we're living in. But you are a jewel and you are so loved and try to remember that over and out thank you i i really thoroughly enjoyed my expansive time with you me too keith <laughs> i'll see you soon everyone my guest tonight Bye. dr susan plunkett the wanderers on earth it's good to see you good to be back I went through a lot of technology stress. I know, Keith, practice what you preach. So I am. I'm breathing, spending time with this beautiful powerhouse of a soul. It helped to massage, cushion, nurture me. That being said, as you do, I love you. See you soon. You are loved beyond measure. Always know that. There's nothing you have to do. There's no place you have to be except right here, right now. And when you do that, you get everything. Everything possible is what you are. You're everything possible. You're infinite potential. You have to feel worthy, deserving of such beautiful things. And simply when you are, everything begins to happen. You are loved beyond measure. <laughs>